Welcome to the A New Body Insight Podcast, empowering and inspiring your journey to optimal health. Hosted by Dr. Supatra Tovar, clinical psychologist, registered dietitian, fitness expert, and author of Deprogrammed Diet Culture. Rethink your relationship with food, heal your mind, and live a diet-free life. And Chantal Donnelly, physical therapist and author of Settled, How to Find Calm in a Stress-Inducing World. We follow our guest's journey to optimal health, providing you with the keys to unlock your own wellness path. Tune in and evolve with us. Welcome back to a new Body Insight podcast. We are back for our second half of the interview with Dr. David Wiss. Dr. David Wiss is a registered dietitian and nutritionist, and he gave us some amazing background as to why and how he got into nutrition. We went down some amazing paths talking about his research and how he looks at addiction very differently than a lot of people, thank goodness. And I'm excited to have him back. We're going to get into some more juicy topics. Thank you for coming back, Dr. Wiss. Yes, let's get juicy. <laughs> Can do. Uh, You have had some additional training in the Institute of Functional Medicine and Psychiatry Redefined, and that that enriches your clinical approach. So how do these disciplines complement your work in nutrition and in mental health? Yeah, at the core of my work is counseling, right? Just creating a safe place for someone to feel heard, feel understood. And um, you can go very far, as you know, you can go very far with a good bond, a good therapeutic relationship, and, uh, you know, someone committed to doing some ongoing uh, support, care, work, however you want to call it. Um, that is the core of, 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 of my work. Um, I've always done quite a bit of very nutrition-focused work, which, you know, often involves using food logs in apps, which is a way for me to really get a sense of what's going on nutritionally and to offer advice there. And then the um, third part of my work is testing, you know, and it's super important to use um, very grounded and, um, you know, big picture thinking when it comes to testing. I think there's a lot of, you know, functional medicine's blown up. It's just blown up in the last few years. And a lot of people confuse functional medicine for just testing. You're just doing a lot of uh, tests that are not covered by insurance, right? And there's some truth to that, but I I think functional medicine is really an effort to think holistically about someone's life history, to be able to draw a timeline and think about how these different things have onset and connected and to think in systems, right? To think in what I like to call systems biology. And Mm -hmm. testing is a huge part of that. So when I'm able to bring together some mental health assessment with some nutrition assessment and then do some blood, urine, stool stuff, and bring it all together and be able to say, these are some things we need to think about. This is work we need to do. These are foods we should move toward or move away from. Here are really uh, indicated supplements for you. It can create a pretty um, holistic approach to wellness. And, um, you know, uh, the nutritional psychiatry field has really blown up. um, And it's a lot of uh, psychiatrists and psychiatric nurse practitioners who are m- moving into the nutrition space. And you know, I welcome it. I, and, Finally. And I, yeah, let's go. Come on, let's talk. It's about let's about time. It's actually surprising, but not surprising that we have gone this long in medicine and in psychology and in psychiatry without addressing nutrition, which, you know, is fundamental for both your physical and your mental health. And we see, you know, just as a layperson would see that their mental health and their physical health improves when they improve their nutrition. So, you know, it's it's interesting because I kind of feel like you and I are at the forefront of kind of nutritional psychology and nutritional biology, but to me it just seems like it's obvious and I can't believe it's taken so long. 
Yeah, and it's been obvious to people, but there's uh, conflicts of interest, right? The bigger picture yes. stuff that you know we could get into or not, because I have so much to say about the commercial determinants of health. Oh uh, my goodness, me too. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that needless to say, there isn't like a lot of uh, coverage. The system doesn't support it. There isn't funding for the research, so it makes it very, very slow moving. And especially, you know, registered dietitian nutritionists, you know, the the parent organization has moved really slow, yes. very, done very little to promote the role of the dietitian in that space. And a lot of my colleagues are bummed that the mental health professionals are moving quicker into nutrition than the nutrition field is moving sort of into mental health. And I'm like, we guys got to help people. Who cares? Like, we just got to be able to provide paths for people and collaborate uh, better. But I think if I were to summarize, the psychiatrists and the psychiatric nurse practitioners probably take a more um, biomedical approach with obviously, uh, medications and nutraceuticals, supplements, et cetera. And classically, you know, nutritionists, nutrition counselors, dietitians, et cetera, might take a, a, a very food focused approach. And so I think that there's gaps in both, right? Mm -hmm. If someone's doing nutritional psychiatry and just doing testing and taking supplements and not taking a deep dive into their relationship with food, you're not going to get the great outcome. And if someone's just doing nutrition counseling and, you know, mindful eating and getting more colors and more food groups, but there's some really clear genetic predispositions or imbalances that need to be addressed uh, from a supplement standpoint, you're going to not get the best outcome as well. So collaboration is the key or people like us that try to do a lot. Uh, right. Without. I think Dr. Michael Grieger said it best when it comes to, you know, true science about nutrition is that there is no money in big broccoli. Which I think is hilarious. That's <laughs> it's it. Because like, you it. see it pretty so much, much sums it up, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You yeah. see so much research funded by food companies or big agriculture, or the Dairy Council and things like that. Uh, and that's what usually makes it into the literature. But a simple study on broccoli is not going to do it because there's no money to be made in it. I spent my whole career on this hill, you know, screaming about conflicts of interest and big food and big pharma. And, you know, it's very obvious to me that these are the core issues that are recreating the problems that we have. And I think yes. practitioners are left in this food system. And then we're left arguing amongst each other as well. These real systemic issues that are just recreating confusion and inequities continue to go on. And I've always been one to talk about this big picture. And it just seems like it's it's a it's a lane that a lot of people don't want to go down because it doesn't seem like you know it can be one um but but i i do think that you know there's a lot happening there especially with the evidence we have on ultra processed foods and how they affect mental health that you know if we rally together and think policy and think public health that we can make a difference and that's the kind of difference that i want to be a part of i help people one on one i've been doing it for 11 years but to think about being able to move the needle on the mega corporations that control the narratives and influence the public discourse and actually market addictive food to children. Like, let's do yes. more of that. <laughs> oh, please. I am joining that revolution with you. That's that's all, what I'm all about, especially when it comes to the nasty uh, effects of diet culture on you know everyday people. So I'm with you. And so I have something to add there. Uh, uh, there's... Um, as an eating disorder professional, right? A, a big part of what we do is focus on diet culture as the upstream driver of a lot of binge eating and loss of control eating. Yes. I actually have a strong sense that a lot of the um, ultra processed food addiction is an upstream driver of diet culture. Mm -hmm. And that if, if we can actually, you know, target the mega corporations that will have a decrease in the incidence and prevalence of restrictive eating disorders. A lot of people are engaging in dieting and restricting because the food environment is so unsafe. Yes. And, yes. And this is like a diverging perspective. I think in the eating disorder world, the common narrative is, no, the food's fine. The food environment's fine. Stop worrying about it. Just worry about 
you know, not dieting. And I think people that study uh, structural issues know like, no, the food environment is a causal factor. It's creating yes. confusion. And that if we address that, let's see the trickle down effect in diet culture. And I think people will have, yeah. you know, yep. You so, can see it in history. You can see right. before big food, you know, came about, we ha didn't that's have right. as many of these problems. That's right. That's right. So yeah, we think about, we think of people think about interventions uh, that can be leveraged. Like what can we affect? And it makes sense to me why people just focus on diet culture and weight stigma, because it does seem like these other larger systemic issues are just completely out of reach, but I think we can do it all. I agree. I hope you two can do it all. I love <laughs> listening to both of you. This is clearly both of your wheelhouses. I'm over here in the physical therapy stress side of things, and I completely concur. And I think um, stress is a big part of why people go to the processed food and end up in stuck in the diet culture spiral. So it's all connected. And I just love how passionate you both are. And I really do help hope that you can make a dent into what we're seeing and what's, yes, especially with someone with a 19 year old, um, we need to save that generation or they need to save themselves, or I don't know what it is, but their food intake is not healthy because they're just, they just have so many bad choices right at their fingertips. So easy for them to get access. So I have, I, I would love to hear about your app. You have a, an, a phone app a mobile app, I yes. guess they're called. Yes. Um, and it's called the Wise Mind Nutritional app. Am I right? Wise Mind Nutrition. And it's three words. And I kind of borrowed Wise Mind from Dialectical Behavioral Therapy, right? Which is an effort mm -hmm. to merge different ways of thinking, right? The, um, you know, the different parts of our mind, right? The more logical versus the more uh, emotional and bring them together. And it does represent that answers my question. I was going to ask you why you didn't call it with mind. But I, I feel like I, I feel like um, I didn't foresee how much difficulty I would have having a last name that's so close <laughs> to and that and then I get mad at people for for pronouncing my name wrong, right? It's like, <laughs> right? It's like, okay. Um, yeah, if only I they think, were pronouncing your last name as wise. That would take care of the entire problem. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, I've created the issue, but I, the the app is, you know, my app, but it's not about me, of course. It is about people that have been struggling finding a home, finding a, uh, a, a message that resonates with them that isn't one of these predetermined food philosophies. So it's a place where people that have disordered eating and restriction could come and be safe, but it's also a place where people that have addiction like eating and loss of control could come and be safe. So I, I, I spent a lot of time to make it a safe place for different types of people rather than just make it this one lane for this one avatar, right? There isn't like one particular person that the app is for. It's for the chronic dieter, right? It's I'm, I'm an eating disorder background person, but I created it for all the people that have anxiety, depression, PTSD, and ADHD, so they could have a place to get some nutrition education. Um, I originally built it as a uh, sort of masterclass video series that has assignments. And, you know, I thought, let's get with the times and sort of packaged it into an app. And I added some food logging features. I used to use uh, a food log called recovery record for many, many years. And I just thought about like, can I make one that's better and um, set out to do just that. So it has different features. Um, the food log, some people are in there using just the food log and they don't care about the videos. Other people are coming in and doing videos and assignments and trying to do a deep dive and learn. And then I built it with connection features so that practitioners could follow their clients or patients and be able to see what's going on with their journaling and their food logs. Um, still in the early phases, which means we're still improving it, iterating it. We actually have a pretty big uh, version two coming soon. Um, you know, it's kind of built for the person that's like ready to do some work. You know, it's like kind of built for the person that's like, I'm committed. I'm going to like get in here every day and do some work. And so the people that are, um, you know, really like 
uh, showing up and willing are getting incredible results. And, you know, I also, I'm going to add a little bit more to make it for the person that's struggling a little bit, a little bit more on the fence, you know, that needs a little bit more support, more notifications, more emails, more, right? So, yes. Um, yeah. yes. Um, Question, do, is it interactive with you as their nutritionist or anyone that else is in your practice? Do you get to see that uh, in, during a session with them so that you can track their progress that way? I mean, yes, I follow all of my clients on the Wise Mind Nutrition app and I get to see what's going on with them to whatever extent they want to log, but it's built for any nutritionist to use it with their clients. So it's flexible. And to be completely honest, I built it more for mental health professionals to use with their clients because I didn't think that there would be enough registered dietitians. I know that nutrition doesn't cover, I'm sorry, insurance doesn't cover nutrition for depression, anxiety. So all the mental health clinicians out there that have clients that know they could benefit from a little bit more education on sleep, sunlight, you know, nutrition, meditation, there's cooking classes that they would support their client through the Wise Mind Nutrition app and basically outsource some of the education to me and to my team. And then just be able to follow along uh, for the person who is taking the journey. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I've got, a, I've got a lot of therapists that are using the app with their clients and getting good results and being able to stay in your uh, scope right? Like you don't have to be a nutrition educator. Let me provide the education and you just provide the support. But I also have a lot of people that are doing the Wise Mind Nutrition Program with no connections. They're just, they're just like I said, they're taking charge. They want a different life and they're doing food logs every day, watching videos, doing assignments, downloading recipes, uh, cooking things, going to the grocery store, and just making it happen. And so I love, I love seeing those people too. They're saying, I, I'm here. I don't need um, anyone to follow me. So yeah, I, I try to make it. It's very, I mean, it's me in most of the videos, but I, I try to make it so that, you know, someone else could also be involved in the process. That's great. I love that. I love that it's, you know, all encompassing. I love that it's for everyone. And this seems to be at the at the core of your own values. You had, you know, stated that inclusivity and a non-judgmental approach are essential uh, values in your practice. How do you ensure that these values are upheld with the interactions that you have with your clients? Yeah, thank you. It's funny, you know, uh, my core values as a scientist and as an uh, intellectual are thinking about um, these complicated intersections, right? Being inclusive for the person that doesn't just have, you know, one diagnosis, but has a cluster of different things, right? That's kind of the way that my mind thinks. And I built the app that way so that it could be accommodating to different people as opposed to just thinking about one kind of target market. Um, but it turns out that that makes it difficult for marketing and advertising because we live in a world where it's like, no, you just have to pick a person, right? And I've like, you know, really thought long and hard. Do I just want to make this diet for depression? Because like, you know, we have the most evidence that nutrition is effective for depression, right? And like, there's been a few times when I've wanted to like pivot just for the sake of algorithms. And I was like, no, I don't want to, because I want, I want this to still be a place where people that have different, um, different backgrounds could yes. come in. They could come in and feel heard rather than deselecting people just for the sake of, you know, kind of marketing per se. So, you know, I, I worked really hard to make it um, safe, have different faces popping in, not just mine. Um, I know the downfalls of my face as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you have a good face. Yes. Uh, but I understand what you're saying. I appreciate you understanding. <laughs> and we appreciate you not worrying about the algorithm, but really worrying about the fact that everybody needs this information. I mean, I yes. could use that app for some of my patients who keep coming back to me with, why do I have so much pain? And I'm thinking there's a systemic inflammation 
problem? Could it be their food? You know, I mean, it's, mm-hmm. there's just so many different uses and different populations who could use this. Yeah. And I, and I haven't really gotten it out the, in terms of spreading the word the way that I plan to. It's been this first, these first, the last six or seven months have been getting good feedback from the users and the people that are finishing the program and figuring out what needs to be improved, what needs to go smoother. So it's a long- Getting the word out now. (laughs) Getting the word out now, indeed. Yeah. Um, And I have about 90 blogs on wisemindnutrition.com. There's a lot of writing that I've done about these topics and these intersection spaces and nutrition for substance use disorder, food addiction, eating disorder. So I put in a lot of, those are all, um, you know, real crafted wise my nutrition blogs that I also recommend. Wonderful. You know, we're using the word inclusivity, meaning you wanted this app to be for as many different populations and diagnoses as possible. But you also mentioned earlier, I think it was in our first episode, you talked a little bit about environment and there's sort of an inclusivity issue with access to healthy food. Um, Within your app, is there a way that you help people who might not have access to, you know, a close farmer's market or a decent grocery store? Is there something yeah, you can do there? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think I've, I've just, you know, really stayed away from hot button issues that would leave someone feeling marginalized in the app, right? So I don't talk specifically uh, as from our earlier topics about like eating disorder or food addiction. Uh, I don't talk about conventional versus organic. I, I try to avoid things that would leave someone feeling left out. They're like, oh, this, this doesn't work for me or I can't afford these recommendations. Mm-hmm. But inherently the message in there is to eat real food and find joy in it and connect to it. And be able to like procure it however you can and, you know, spend some time with it in the kitchen, sit down and have meals, you know, with others if possible. So it really is just about bringing the joy and the celebration back to food and back to bodies, you know, so that people, you know, feel like, you know, anyone, um, you know, can can take this path. And of course, I made the app like... When I was going to do a master class, it was going to be this expensive thing. And now it's like 29 bucks. You know? <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. And I'm sure that uh, your counseling experience really helped to influence what you put on this app. Can you tell us, you know, some of the most significant lessons or one or two of the most significant lessons you've learned in your work with people? What really stands out for you that's influenced what you're doing right now? Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think that early in my career, some of the training I got was to, you know, position myself as an expert. And I think in those early days of doing one-on-one, I was like coming in and I got the answers and it became very clear to me within a few years of practice that that was going to be burnout work. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially when you're like, you know, frustrated that you created some elaborate plan for someone and they had they weren't able to, to see it through. And so, you know, my clinical practice has been me being curious, me learning, me wanting to know more about what the person is saying and being more of like a coach, a shoulder to shoulder type of a guide and helping people feel confident rather than dependent on me, right? I want people to feel as as competent, confident eaters, not to lean too heavily on someone. And so I try to make less decisions for people and more so just root for people to learn how to make decisions on their own. And the app is just that, which is, it's not like, oh, I'm, I'm telling you what to do. I'm offering you different ways to think about different issues, giving you things to consider. I want you to make a choice. And the app might be there to like hold you accountable to the choice that you made. So it's not a diet program. And I think when people see a nutrition app, it's pretty safe to assume that it's probably some sort of a point of view, a diet, right? And I, I've made it just the opposite of that. So that like there isn't a agenda. I don't, I'm not trying to get someone to eat like me 
right? That's the other thing about having a personal story with nutrition. Everyone is committed to crusading to the world to get them to convert to your own diet. I'm a dietary agnostic. I don't have (laughs) a way of eating, a label, and I try to just get people to create and claim their own nutritional identity and be able to like leave my clinical practice, leave the app, feeling like they can go on in this tricky food environment to be able to show up for their life. And it's like, I'm, you know, I'm always here if you need me, but like, you got this go. I love that. That's exactly what I tell my clients. I say, you know, hopefully by the end of treatment, you will have become your own best expert. You will know what is best for your body. You will know what foods fuel you. You will know how to listen to your body and, you know, then guide yourself as opposed to following whoever is the guru out there, whoever is the, you know, the leading diet, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I think it's so important for them to all tap into their body, their intuition and, you know, what, and their own knowledge base, because we don't have any control over that. And outside of the office from us, that's what they're going to have to rely on. So I'm really, really impressed with the work that you're doing, David. And I cannot believe that we are out of time because I would love to pick (laughs) your brain some more. So we might have to have you back on the show at some point so we can ask all of the other questions that we have for you. But for now, thank you so much, Dr. David Wiss. We are so glad that you're out there doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for having me. And yes, there is my clinical practice, Nutrition in Recovery. And then, of course, the app is Wise My Nutrition. Yes. And is it nutritioninrecovery.com? That's the, that's, the, that's the website. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. will have links to that in uh, the captions of this podcast. Are you podcast. on Instagram at all? Oh, yeah. Dr. David Wiss is the Instagram and I have a, a wise mind nutrition on TikTok as well. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you everyone for tuning into the A New Body Insight podcast. We look forward to our next exciting interview and really hope you join us next time. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for tuning into the A New Body Insight podcast. Please remember, the content shared on this podcast is for entertainment purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. You can find us anywhere podcasts are streaming, on YouTube at my.anew.insight, and at anew-insight.com under the A New Body Insight podcast tab. Follow us on our socials at my.anew.insight on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and threads for more updates. Tune in next time and evolve with us. Thank you.